searching history for buried classics. This is Lost Treasures of Game. Hey, what's up guys? It's Fred Rojas here from Gaming History 101 and welcome to Lost Treasures of Gaming, a collaboration with omgnexus.com. Now this week, Sid and Sean had a very special guest. Yes, friends, it was none other than Bill Hogue, the inventor, creator, if you will, of 1983's Minor 2049er. Now, if you're not familiar with this game, you will know it is an instant classic. And my co-host, Jam, absolutely adores this game. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I don't know if this is indicative of anything, but it seems like a lot, a lot of Europeans love this game. Now, it's probably because it was, excuse me, quite prominent on uh, computer systems, microcomputers. But also, there is just some certain draw that Europeans seem to have, especially the Brits. But anyway, aside from that, um, Bill Hogue talks in the episode, and I highly recommend you check it out, um, about the fact that they were he was kind of making a game that was going to take the spectacle of Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and kind of put them together. And I think that if you look, regardless of all the speculation, regardless of all the things that people have said, about what Minor 2049er is trying to accomplish. The reality of it is that very much so Minor 2049er is a weird hybrid between Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, and it works very well. It has a lot in common with those games as well. Um, one of the biggest things it has in common is that it is tough as nails. And uh, in the episode, Sid kind of joked, you want to see how far I will get. Well, Sid, I hate to let you down. I have not played Minor 2049er in a while. It does have some nuance, as uh, I guess I could put it, that's uh, very common in both Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, which may throw me for a loop. But you know what? I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to give it the old college try and see how far I can get. Um, I was playing a couple preliminary rounds, and I was able to get through the first three levels. So that doesn't mean much, but hey. Um, real quick, uh, a couple of quick notes on Minor 2049er before we kick it off. But this is mostly going to be an episode where I'm just playing games. Um, Minor 2049er started off on the Atari 800. Now, previous to this, um, to my knowledge, Bill Hogue was programming on the TRS-80, um, the, the Tandy. But uh, since Radio Shack or Tandy, I don't know which one, uh, decided to discontinue that microcomputer. Uh, he did development uh, for Marty, uh, Minor 2049er on the Atari 800 series. Now, there's a part, and I apologize, but this is a good reason for you to go out and see the episode where Sean and Sid talk to him. Um, that there is some speculation on the internet as to why he chose the 8-bit Atari uh, microcomputers and he kind of squall squashes one of the common rumors and explains the real reason why. But anyway, it was ported all over the place. And one of the places that it was ported where I definitely saw it, where I definitely played it, um, was uh, on the cartridge uh, for the Commodore 64. Um, it was huge for me. My dad had bought a Commodore 64 and it was pretty much Kids on Keys, Jumpman, and Miter 2049er. So... Anyway, as we will point out in this video, uh, it's a fascinating look at uh, one of gaming's most uh, interesting hybrids. And uh, it, I have to give it up to Bill Hogue. He had a heck of a game on his hands when he did this. So um, anyway, we will get started with this uh, in just a sec. So as you can see, I've got the good old Commodore chimed up over here. I will switch to full screen in, in just a moment once I get it all started. But uh, let's see here. All right, we're going to unpause this, and let's restart it. And I got a good old joystick here. So here's your basic look at Minor 2049er. Let's uh, blow this up to full screen for you. All righty. Um, and here we go. As you can see, uh, relatively basic sound effects, but not uncommon for the Commodore 64. All right, so here's my Miner. Basically, he can walk around, he can jump. And as you can see, as I'm walking over these kind of gridded platforms, they are becoming thick lines. And when they do that, that's me basically claiming parts of the mine. And so that's what you want to do. And every level kind of has its shtick, its thing that's going to kill you. And this one is that platform over there where you got to really time your jump because if you miss, just like in Donkey Kong, you do die. 
So anyway, also you'll notice at the top there is a timer. Yes, this game is timed. Now it's a very liberal uh, counter as far as the seconds go. And I should also point out as I eat a, an item, it does give me the opportunity to go basically eat and or kill these goons over here, which is the Pac-Man mechanic in full effect. And I'm sure you can also see where the Donkey Kong uh, concepts come in. But anyway, here's an example of the first level. Not my fastest. I usually like to finish with more than 15 seconds, but doing okay so far, right? <laughs> anyway, it's real simple when it starts off and it gets a little crazier. Okay, so the color palette, this is what I always liked about the C64, was insane. Um, as you can see over here, there are these like thick areas, and what these are is these are slides, and you want to be very careful. Oh, see, because you can slide down the slides. Now, sometimes I can time the jump just right where I can take it out, but uh, anyway, I'm going to eat these guys real quick so they can't be a problem for me. Um, time will be probably the biggest thing against you. You need to know the pattern as to how you want to go about completing this area. Oh, okay. Got to hurry up, Fred. All right. Let's go do the parts I do know very well as quick as I can, and maybe I can help myself out a little bit here. So you can jump up and eat a creeper or whatever these things are, but you cannot jump up and... Um, ooh, okay. You can't claim a land by jumping up. So anyway, if I time my jump... There we go. Now let's see if I can time another jump. There we go. Okay. So time's somewhat on my side, but I've got a lot of ground to cover. No pun intended. Um, so first we'll get this guy right here. No! Okay. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory as to how I missed that before. Let's see if I can do a little bit more of a distance jump. Go back. Okay. This is going to come down to the wire, but I feel pretty confident I'll, I'll knock this out of the park. All right. No! I am going to die. Two blocks left. You see what I said? Time was against me. I did not do that with the uh, greatest finesse that I needed to. So, but again, very liberal seconds, but I knew it was I was a goner. But uh, anyway... That's why they were nice enough to give you multiple lives, so. All right, here we go. Get the creeps first. Come here. All right. I'll go over here. There we go. There we go. Okay. That's kind of a little trick as to how you can do that if you're lucky enough. There we go. Perfect. What I've got set up right here is exactly what I want set up. Ah, oh, okay. Not that big of a deal for me right now. Going into it, doing pretty good. Got a decent amount of time, but I definitely want to clean that area up. No, as best I can. All right, I might have to go a little crazy with it. Well, crazy. That's a kind of joke term there we go okay i knew i was gonna fall but now i've got a decent amount of real estate taken up should be pretty good depending on what this creeper here wants to do ah i tapped him hit detection on this is brutal <laughs> all right Diantane is saying on the first level that lone platform can be reached just by jumping underneath it. No kidding. See, I was having trouble with that. I, that's what I remembered. But I wasn't having much luck with that. So thanks for the heads up. I'm clearly going to have to... Uh... There we go. See, because I would hope I could do the same thing with this platform here. But, like, it's not letting me do it. So far, so good on the time, but 
I'm sure I'm not making Sid proud with this performance so far. <laughs> there we go. That's a little something that uh, might be able to get some credit for. Now, much like uh, Donkey Kong, I can jump over them, but it doesn't do anything to them yet. All right, let's claim this. It would be almost embarrassing if I couldn't pull this off now. Gaming the system. Oh, okay. Hurry it up, Fred. Okay. So it is just a. Scientane says that platform is higher. So it is really just a size thing. Okay, come on. No! Man, okay, yeah. See, not showing our boys, uh, much skill here i will get it but uh might have to start over <laughs> and this again this is one of the many ways that minor 2049er is hard but this isn't anywhere near what resembles actual challenge so there we go um real quick there's my first game over screen but uh i am not a quitter so if you're willing to watch i'm willing to keep going All right, there's Bill Hogue showing off uh, his wonderful uh, um, copyright screen, which he deserves in every way, shape, and form. All right, let's get going on this. All right, let's see here. I wasn't able to get up there. I know, right? I feel like it's uh, it's totally jipping me on that platform. But no harm, no foul. I made it up here. Gotcha. An often fun game I like to play is trying to guess what these things are. Like, what is this? Is this a uh, frisbee, a candy wafer? What was left for me there? <laughs> well, Zion Tane says, strange, I did it the other day. There's a couple of reasons why you might have done it and I didn't. Um, first of all, I don't know if you've heard, but I'm terrible at video games. Um, as a game reviewer... Uh, in a somewhat official capacity that entitles me to being terrible at games. So don't worry, it's okay. A second reason is um, there are nuance to these games as anyone who plays them will tell you. And uh, perhaps I'm not demonstrating the best example of that. So, All right, let's go over here and see if I can't take care of this whole thing real quick. All right, personally, I think that shouldn't have let me get away with that, but it did, so I'm not going to complain. All right, so far doing pretty good. But feet don't fail me now. The creeps are gone. Now there's just the don't screw it up mechanic. Oh, uh, I wasn't thinking. Oh, I really wasn't thinking. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Probably overreacted there. <laughs> uh, didn't mean to scream out like as if I'd been punched in the gut or something. <laughs> no! Oh, come on. This must be painful to watch. And yet, not really frustrating. 
Like, I'm actually having fun. Can I get lucky? Yes! Ha ha ha! Zero seconds left. But I conquer. <laughs> okay. Now you'll get to see a little bit more of the, uh, the really crazy parts of this game. Ah, it was too far. I should have known that. I know. <laughs> Zion Tane saying woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, finally a new level I can watch. <laughs> there was like this sense of like a true accomplishment though. Um, you know, Bill Hoag's, uh No. Oh, whew. Bill Hoag's game, many like it, uh, such as Donkey Kong, Pac-Man. I don't know. For some reason, Pac-Man doesn't seem to quite fit in this uh, this nuance. Um, maybe it's because I find Pac-Man to be a tad on the easier side, but I could be wrong. Okay, that's not going to happen. But um, but I don't quite have the sense of accomplishment shoot um, with uh, with Pac-Man that I do with stuff like this and uh, and Donkey Kong and whatnot. But Right now, if I'm not careful, you guys are going to have to be watching even more of that previous level. But you know what? The biggest thing about Minor 2049er, and again, games of this ilk, is that the more you play them, the better you get at them. And I truly believe that. So. That's the one plus side. Can I live this? Please say I can live this. I can. All right. I've got plenty of time, and I've got no bad guys left. The one question I do have is, how do I get up to... Oh, no. How do I get up to platform three? I wonder if those are elevators I can truly take. They did light up when I went over them. Um, Ziantan, I know you... Sean, I know you're in the, the chat... Any insight you can offer appreciated? What's going on? We've got a huge freeze. All right, well, let's try this. It did freeze, but apparently restarting it fixes that. Use the elevators. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, learning process. Uh, I do apologize. I didn't get a chance to go back and play this game before... Um, before the show, like, other than, like, the short period of time I spent with it before doing the show tonight. But to a certain extent, I do like that that's the case. Um, if for no other reason than, yeah, I don't know. I cannot find the right pixel that allows that jump to happen. But fortunately, I can make the jump, so <laughs> I'd say I'm okay. But uh, anyway, I think it's best to, you know, uh, have a familiarity with the game, which I always try to do. Even Rescue on Fractalus, like, I hadn't played it, I think, in decades. But at least I remember playing it with my friends, and I remember them getting it and things like that. But, uh, but there is something to, like, rediscovering these games. So, um, you know, I'm sure if I ever went back and did Jumpman, and again, I know I'm asking for the universe here, uh, Ziontane, but if you ever happen... Uh, to uh, find the uh, developer of Jumpman, and I will sh certainly do what I can to help you find that person. Um, I would love that Lost Treasures of Gaming, and I would love to play it again. Uh, I don't need an excuse uh, like Lost Treasures of Gaming to play it again, but I would still love the excuse. Um, but, uh, all right, here we go. Ah. I have to apologize to a certain extent. There's a little bit of the uh, the joystick into the computer. Um, a little bit. I mean, not enough that it's really bothering me. And I'm actually able to play this game with quite a degree of precision. But I know that's having some mild effect on my performance. But I feel pretty confident about this right now. 
And I think the minimalism of the sound effects is probably one of this game's most charming features, personally. Okay, that's taken care of. Okay, well, at least I got those parts. So now there's very little I will have to concern myself with on the next go. Ziantain apparently knows jump, well, not apparently, clearly knows jump man and loves it as well. Well, sir. Carved from the same. No! Okay, cool. Was able to break the system slightly. No! Ah, grr. I got... I got careless. And that was my mistake. And that is what Minor 2049er will do to you. Uh, I do like also that the color palette swaps. I don't remember if that was in the original Atari 800 version. I was watching some gameplay footage um, just to familiarize myself with the other ports. And I don't know if that was previously in there. But anyway... No, 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 no. Oh, it's painful to watch, I know. <laughs> well, uh, Ziantane, I am not going to give up, but you need to do me a favor and tell Sid I apologize for being so abhorrent at this uh, beloved game from both your childhoods and probably Bill Hogue, but fortunately, I don't think... Um, He's going to uh, be too mad at me. Uh, he's just happy that uh, um, people are still playing and enjoying his game, of which I am definitely doing both. Um, this game I'm still loving, even though it's been so long and I so clearly stink at it. Whoa! Okay. Well, this kind of helps me consolidate some time, though. Perhaps the elevators are a little hint of elevator madness, but I'm guessing elevator madness wasn't out yet when Bill developed this game, but just in case I'm wrong. Whew. No, seriously. Okay. Let's get serious, Fred. Let's make sure to take care of business this time. No monkeying around. No goofballs. All right, be very careful. Okay. No! Why was I not paying attention? No! Come on. Again, must be painful. Scientane says it's not an easy game. I don't think any I do any better. Oh, I doubt that, however. Um, also... Uh, Randy Glover on the show to talk about Jumpman, Scientan says. So there you go. There's your exclusive, Randy Glover. Oh, and one block is my undoing. And I think this may be game over. If this is a game over, I'm going to regretfully call it a close to tonight's Minor 2049er. But I do have some notes to say real quick. So, okay, that will mark my game over. I do apologize, but... I'm hoping this did a couple of things, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So let's switch this on over. All right, there we go. All right. So what I am hoping is that, if nothing else, this game has made you want to play it. You should want to play it. If you are a fan of old-school arcade games, the 80s, anything that would have been in Flynn's arcade, I don't know. Minor 2049er is one of those pinnacle games that kind of captures what we all loved about the arcades. So I highly recommend giving it a try. Go get it. It was on lots of things. I think it was even on the 5200. There should be playable ways to play it. And there's, uh, there's even online ways to play it. Now, if you go over to Bill Hogue's site, um, I know they had a broken uh, online version of it, but you can attempt to you know, again, you can attempt to play it and see if it works on your system. Uh, I know Sean proved that Windows 10 definitely doesn't work. But 
if that doesn't work for you, there are other places like archive.org which do have these games available and you can play them streaming online. But they're super fun. It needs four directions and one jump button and you will literally lose hours. Again, there is this part of me, the one more part of me that everybody knows if you're like a hardcore gamer or not even if you're a hardcore gamer, if you're a dedicated gamer, um, that I just want to play one more. And I got to tell you, if I, was, if I wasn't careful, I would be playing one more all night long. But anyway, um, all right. So the website is GamingHistory101.com. This Twitch stream is uh, twitch.tv forward slash GH101. And of course, there we also have our YouTube page uh, at GamingHistory101.com, which you can link to. But if you want to go directly there, it's uh, YouTube.com forward slash VGPTGS. Yes, I know. Sorry, I can't change it now. Um, but more importantly, Lost Treasures of Gaming is the podcast. You should definitely listen to it. It's at omgnexus.com or look up Lost Treasures of Gaming in any of your feeds and uh, listen to Sid and Sean every week. Be your video game historians and bring the developers of wonderful games from the past to life and tell you all about them. So anyway, we will be coming back next week. However, um, I'm going to have to do it at a different time. I'm going to do it Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the reason I'm doing that is because shortly after that show, I will be flying to Seattle for PAX Prime 2015. So if you're going to be there, hit me up. I'm at Spiders Venom, S-P-Y-D-E-R-S-V-E-N-O-M, Spiders Venom, um, on Twitter. Hit me up. Let me know. Let's do a meetup. Let's hang out. I am going to be there every day, and I'm going to be having some fun. I will be on the show floor. And then we've got some open to the public parties. If you want to see some great games, games that'll be the place to do it so if you're in the seattle area definitely hit me up anyway until next week this is fred rojas saying peace out all right and for those of you who are waiting around for the quote-unquote mature broadcast um we are going to be playing a bunch of indies that are like neo retro so i'm going to uh crack open a cold one and uh, get these uh, queued up. But I'll be back in about five minutes and we will get started on uh, tonight's show, which um, it's indie games and it's retro style games. So I might be doing a little bit of swearing. So just warning you up front, uh, Lost Treasures of Gaming will always be for general audiences. However, after uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time, um, there is the possibility of explicit content and explicit uh language from me but anyway uh so in the meantime have a good night guys on the internet as to why he chose the 8-bit atari uh microcomputers and he kind of squall squashes one of the common rumors and explains the real reason why but anyway it was ported all over the place and one of the places that it was ported where i definitely saw it where i definitely played it um was uh on the cartridge uh for the commodore 64 um it was huge for me my dad had bought a commodore 64 and it was pretty much kids on keys jump man and miter 2049 or so anyway as we will point out in this video, uh, it's a fascinating look at uh, one of gaming's most uh, interesting hybrids. And uh, it, I have to give it up to Bill Hogue. He had a heck of a game on his hands when he did this. So um, anyway, we will get started with this uh, in just a sec. So as you can see, I've got the... Searching history for buried classics. classics. This is Lost Treasures of Game. Treasures of Game. Hey, what's up guys? It's Fred Rojas here from Gaming History 101 and welcome to Lost Treasures of Gaming, a collaboration with omgnexus.com. Now this week, Sid and Sean had a very special guest. Yes, friends, it was none other than Bill Hogue, the inventor, creator, if you will, of 1983's Minor 2049er. Now, if you're not familiar with this game, you will know it is an instant classic. And my co-host, Jam, absolutely adores this game. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I don't know if this is indicative of anything, but it seems like a lot, a lot of Europeans love this game. Now, it's probably because it was 
excuse me, quite prominent on uh, computer systems, microcomputers. But also, there is just some certain draw that Europeans seem to have, especially the Brits. But anyway, aside from that, um, Bill Hogue talks in the episode, and I highly recommend you check it out, um, about the fact that they were he was kind of making a game that was going to take the spectacle of Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and kind of put them together. And I think that if you look, regardless of all the speculation, regardless of all the things that people have said, about what Minor 2049er is trying to accomplish. The reality of it is that very much so Minor 2049er is a weird hybrid between Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, and it works very well. It has a lot in common with those games as well. Um, one of the biggest things it has in common is that it is tough as nails. And uh, in the episode, Sid kind of joked, you want to see how far I will get. Well, Sid, I hate to let you down. I have not played Minor 2049er in a while. It does have some nuance, as uh, I guess I could put it, that's uh, very common in both Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, which may throw me for a loop. But you know what? I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to give it the old college try and see how far I can get. Um, I was playing a couple preliminary rounds, and I was able to get through the first three levels. So that doesn't mean much, but hey. Um, real quick, uh, a couple of quick notes on Minor 2049er before we kick it off. But this is mostly going to be an episode where I'm just playing games. Um Minor 2049er started off on the Atari 800. Now, previous to this, um, to my knowledge, Bill Hogue was programming on the TRS-80, um, the, the Tandy. But uh, since Radio Shack or Tandy, I don't know which one, uh, decided to discontinue that microcomputer, uh, he did development uh, for Marty, uh, Minor 2049er on the Atari 800 series. Now, there's a part, and I apologize, but this is a good reason for you to go out and see the episode where Sean and Sid talk to him. Um, that there is some speculation.